Hi everyone, now I'm sitting, I'm tying these, these caddis patterns at the moment. These are just basically feather wing caddis, uh, much this like the default caddis uh, with the, the duck wing. Now this here is just a brown version, this is the tan or light cinnamon caddis pattern. Now they're very easy to tie uh, and uh, basically using feathers from the, the body of uh, the, the female or the the hen bird and the cock bird. The cock bird being the uh, this is the brown one, which is the brown, which is the this one's mainly just around about the uh, the neck and the shoulder. Sorry, um, these these are the hen bird feathers. Again, you get them in the body. Uh, nice, well marked, nice natural sort of tan look, ideal for this fly. Now. It's this reason I say it's a reasonably simple fly to tie. You can use a tan coloured uh, thread, or in this case I'm using Rusty Dunn. That's a uni thread. Now I have waxed it. I'm just going to run down the thread. Just quickly run it down. Put a nice layer of thread down the shank until the point in line with the barb, and just remove the waste. Now the fly can be tied with materials that you have. Uh, like in this case, I'm using for the body underwing. And even for the, uh, the thorax area, I'm using some dyed cinnamon or light cinnamon CDC feathers. These are just basic um, domestic duck feathers which I've dyed. Now, what you could use is the, say, a dry fly dubbing for the body and, and for the front. You could think practically use the same or use a hackle, it's up to yourself. I mean, I do tie them with hackles as well. But when you see this fly uh, in the water and it sort of twists and turns like in real caddis, uh, you really like it. So anyway, I've got two of the light cinnamon CDC feathers. Now, what I like to I do a turn at the bottom, just over the base, you can see the, 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 the bottom of the feather, and I just bring it through, just keeping the thread just lightly tight to I really get as close as I can go. Uh, to the tips and then I just wind and tighten up. To two thirds of the way up of the shank, then I wind these up. So basically just wind them up. You can twist them if you wish, it's up to you. I like to just wind them up like this. If you feel they want to be a bit stronger you can actually wind it over some uh, super glue or something to give it, to hold it better, but I find that's fine. Now. These here, the remains, is my dubbing as well. So what I've got here is a lot of fibre that I could easily remove from this, the waste and put it onto my desk. Now that's what I'm going to do. I'm just basically going to trim it away from the side of the feather. Now you could pull it off, but I find that you get, it's much better if you trim it away. You get some cleaner fibre. Get it as close to the the stem as you can, and you'll end up with something like this. Then, what I'm going to do is the underwing. Now, the underwing could be, you could use a like a poly wing or anything like that, or uh, like a poly post or some sort, poly pro, or uh, if you can get it, the aero wing. Now, I'm just using couple of CDC feathers, the same colour, just tying it underneath to the back of the hook. So just hold it on the top. Again, three or four turns to catch it in and trim away. And again, there's lots of good fibre there. Uh, I'll, I'll dub that onto the thorax. I'll just put it on my desk, trim it away. Don't waste any CDC fibre. It's too good to fling away. Now I'm just going to wax my thread, tidy up, come back up to the wing. Now I've got the hen, these are the body feathers from the, the mallard duck, the hen bird. Now I've got two feathers. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically pull back what I don't need. Look at the length that I want. Now I want to be, be able to fold some of the fibres down either side. So make sure you leave enough for that. Do the other one. Now I usually do them both, one laying on top of one another. 
But anyway, now what I do to control them and to waterproof them a bit as well. Now the wax I use is a clear wax. You can see it's a bit. I've been using it well here, but after time it gets a bit coloured like here. Uh, but I still keep it. I use that. But what I do is I just run the, the underside of the feather over the wax. Now you've got to make sure the wax is tacky. And that holds the fibre, controls it, and as I say, makes it more uh, water repellent. And I do that with the other one as well. Just run it through. Now you could, in the smaller flies, I just use a single feather. But this is a size 12, so I'm going to use a I'm actually going to use two feathers. So I'll lay it on top of one another and make sure the tips are lined up. Double check in here. And it's fine. Now when I'm, once I'm happy, I just lay it on the top. Set them on the top. The length, you're looking for at least the length of the hook. But when you tie on here, obviously a third of the way down, and that will sit over the back. And when you're happy with the length, just basically get your finger and thumb. The stem of the feather, I'll show you, is laying on the top. Just making sure these are lined up first. And then I simply come round with a couple of turns, loose like, and then tighten. And then another couple, just to see how it's going to sit. And basically that's it, and that's what you're looking for. I'm just going to pull these together a wee bit. And the wax helps to hold it. And then this sort of round light shaped wing, that there traps, traps the air, it, it floats really well. Once you use it floating as well, it sits really, it sits great. And it it's a twists and turns with the, like a natural in the water. Once you're happy, a few turns, trim away the waste. Trim them there. Wax your thread. Take your thread down to the eye, just tidying things up. Now, basically, continue to the eye and then come back up. But a head length. For the horns, I'm going to use a cotton de Leon fibre. Now, I'm going to use four, because these are fine. So, about four fibres, tear, tear them off together. Tie them over the front. Now you're a head length away from the eye, so give yourself plenty of room. I always you to get a ton of dubbing or just get the thread in front. So we catch them on the top. Just make sure they're sitting where you want. That looks fine. Trim away the waste. Wax your thread. To this point. Looks okay. Now, you're not going to have a perfect wing, you're going to get a nice shape in the wing, as long as you get a nice shape. Uh, so don't worry too much. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to split the thread, rather than forming a dubbing loop. I'm just going to spin the bobbin anti-clockwise and allow the thread to sort of flatten out. And then, I use my needle to flatten it, so I run my needle through, which will flatten the thread. This is a uni thread. Now wax your thread because this will help to protect it and keep it away, keep it actually apart. Now it needs a wee bit, a wee bit more. Now I don't know if I can show you there, but you'll see how the thread flattens. And then what I do is I just come and put my finger up close to the underside, and then bring this point in the lint. Try and get it as even a split as you can. That means you go back two or three times to do it. I say the wax helps. I'm just going to take my time. There we are. Once you've got the split, you just push it the needle down. And then put your, your finger to keep it apart. Now we have the CD, CDC fibres lying on my desk. They're quite loose. So what I like to do is just kind of roll them in my fingers just a wee bit and offer them to inside between the thread the split thread now don't be shy but put enough in there and then allow the thread to come together then I 
basically bring the bobbin up close, up right up, and then I just spin the bobbin, or put your finger in, sorry, just to stop the, the bobbin twisting or hitting your desk, just keep it away from your desk, and then just allow, spin clockwise to tighten the thread back up, and it'll tighten up, as you can see there, you've got enough, a nice dub and loop of CDC, and then you just wind down, to the horns. This last turn here, I just usually just bring the horns up. That's why I like to leave a space. I just put some dubbing in front. And there we are. To varnish, I just I like to just put some varnish on the thread. About a centimetre from the eye. Just hold materials up, out of the way, and then quite finish. Tighten up, and there we go. And that's your small tan caddis. You can see a lovely shape. Just when I mean, you see this in the water, it just looks so real. Uh, even if you've got a fibre, like in here, there's a wee fibre loose, just put that there, it'll pull together in the water. So it will become part of the fly, part of the wee shape of the wing, uh, and it twists and turns. As I say, if you want it to sit, different way you can always wind a hackle through or even through the dubbing or just down to replace the, the cdc but if you want a nice soft fiber and a nice soft cdc uh, sort of cardless like this this is a, the perfect pattern for you